Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Excuse me for just a minute while I try to get everything straightened up here. Tonight we are working on my Evermoment Be Happy Canvas. Um, it is 40 by 45. I've had so much fun with this. It's working up like a quilt and I've just had a ball. So welcome to my channel. Uh, Diamond Painting with Anxiety. I'm Karen and I'm really glad you're here. Hopefully you've got a whip, something that you're working on, and a nice beverage. And let's go ahead and get busy dropping some drills, hopefully on our canvas and not on the floor. But hey, it's me, so you never know. So I am working on this. I have only this top strip, so this much. A um, little bit right in here to fill in and then across this painting. This would be like the border of the quilt. So um, yeah, it's really turning out nice. Um, really excited to finish it, get it framed, um, hang it up somewhere in my home, and then, you know, move on to the next one. So I'm going to zoom, I think I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Look away for a minute. Oh. That's all. Uh, uh, let's see. I think that might be pretty good. I don't know. Maybe I should go sideways. Maybe my hand won't be so in the way if I go sideways. Let's see. So there's my little rewards card that I'm using as an edge. I always do that with all of my my um, paintings. I um, use a, some sort of debit credit or a rewards card to keep my edge really straight. So I think we're going to try this. We'll see if my hand gets in the way much. I'm going to peel a little bit more of this back. Give myself a little bit bigger section to work on. That was really stuck. I just, what I do is I just, oops, that piece came all the way off. Guess we're done with that one. Um, I just take this all the way um, off and then I just line this up right on my very last drill right along the edge and then that keeps my edges nice and straight and gets me off to a good start as far as you know everything being in as neat of lines as I can get them. Um, I do that with all canvases really except for who I can because who I can has a tendency to pop on me so I don't do that. I work normally with Hua cans. I work from the middle out, and then if I do that, I don't have any issues. So, yep, this one's almost done. I'll be able to start something new real soon. Um, let's see. I think that I am going to start with ends, which is 3829, number 22. I always number my containers, and if my key isn't numbered, then I'll go ahead and figure out how to number it myself. I just find that to be easiest for my brain, so that's how I do it. Um, so I did want to do a whip and chat. I don't have a lot of battery life or a lot of energy tonight, so this may not be real long. Um, this may be a somewhat unusual whip and chat for me because um, it may get a little bit more real and a little more raw than some of my whip and chats normally do. You know, I just feel like we all have a story and, um, you know, I'm always real with you guys as far as I am myself, um, not putting on some kind of show or act, but um, when it comes to you know, um, some of the hard things and tragedies I have faced in my life, you know, I, I will probably tell you about those things because it's a part of what made me who I am. And also, I think that it can be real important um, to share, you know, some of the things you've been through because a lot of times it can really help others. So I'm not afraid to do that whatsoever. Um, however, I think also, you know, 
I don't want to come on and do these whip and chats and just whine too much or focus on the problem because not only would that be not too pleasant for you to listen to, but um, it's not good for me either because, you know, whatever we, I, I'm a firm believer in whatever we focus on grows. Um, it's very important that we have a positive attitude both with things that have happened to us in the past and, and including things we're going through, you know, currently. I'm going to switch colors real, here real quick. 310, um, which is the heart symbol. Getting down to the end here, um, there's a, this, this part's a little bit of confetti, so, and it's a small strip, so I have to change pretty frequently, but that's okay. So anyway, yeah, I just I just feel like it's important to try and stay positive and um, be real, but not dwell in my problems either past or pre uh, past or or present. So I have alluded to this a couple of times um, in videos already. Um, I think I'm ready to go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. Um, my life is about to change. Again, life is all about change. I've been through many changes in my life, and I'm going to go through another one. Um, in June, I get to um, have my 14-year-old grandson, Wyatt, um, move in with me. And um, that will that's not a temporary thing. It's not a we're going to try it or anything like that. It's... It's going to be a permanent thing. So he will be with me. Um, he's 14 now. He just turned 14. He will be with me until he turns 18 um, or longer. I mean, you know, sometimes kids don't move out of the house right away. So the reason that this is happening, again, is one of those things that I don't want to dwell on too much, um, except just to let you know that um, Wyatt is a, is a good kid. He hasn't done anything wrong. So, you know, he's not a behavioral problem. So they're sending him away from home. It's nothing like that. It's, you know, a very difficult thing and a very, very heartbreaking thing. But again, I don't think that going into too many details will do anybody any good. Um, other than to say that, like I said, he's a good kid. You know, he's a teenager. Um, so he's got some of those typical teenage attitudes sometimes. But, I mean, what kid doesn't? Um, but he hasn't done anything wrong. No one's physically abused him or, you know, anything like that. It's it's not because of that either. Nobody's doing drugs. Um, nothing like that. Um, it's just Wyatt is the son of the daughter, my daughter that died, and he has been adopted by my um, older daughter and her husband, and it's just a heartbreaking, very difficult thing. Um, so it's just going to be in Wyatt's best interest to come and live with Grandma. Um, I will in a sense be parenting, but I cannot be his parent. I don't want to be his parent. I want to be his grandma. But you know, I there are there are some areas where I am going to have to step in as a parent. Um, you know, I am close to my daughter Sarah and her husband James, so they will be helping me out. Um, Wyatt will you know, definitely be spending time with them. It's real important to us to keep him close to his siblings. He has um, a five-year-old little sister, a four-year-old little sister, and a two-year-old little brother. Um, you know, and as far as they are concerned, and as far as Wyatt is concerned, those are his siblings. He, I think I said, but he's been with, with Sarah and James since he turned five, so... Those kids, um, the younger kids, you know, Wyatt has been a part of their life forever, and he has been their brother since they were born. So that's real important to, to us. 
Um, you know, so he'll be spending time with them. Um, you know, we'll be doing holidays. Um, he'll probably be going on trips and vacations and doing fun things with them. Um, probably going over, you know, on weekends. We'll see how that all goes. Um, you know, so, uh, it's not like anybody's, uh, like he can't be with them, like they're not going to support me. That's not the fact. So, but as you know, probably if you've watched my videos, as most of you know, um, you know, I live in a very small three quarter studio apartment um, in a transitional homeless shelter um, where I am employed as the on-site case manager, resident manager. Um, so, um, one of the reasons I haven't talked about this more is because when last September, um, it became, became pretty obvious that something was going to have to be changed in, you know, just in Wyatt's best interests. And so Wyatt did go to Washington and spent this last school year with my youngest son in um, Spokane. Um, but my son is, you know, pretty young um, and newly married. He's been married less than a year, getting close to a year, but less than a year. Um, he's a long haul truck driver, so he's gone most of the week. Um, Wyatt was living with... Uh, not only my son and his wife, but her parents as well. They all live on this great big, like, ranch compound thing. Um, big house, you know, uh, an apartment off the, uh, the garage. So, I mean, it, it worked well. Um, and again, why it's not being, you know, sent away from there um, for any other reason than for my son and his wife, it's just not practical. They are probably going to be moving from that property where they live with her parents um, to a city about three hours away from there to be closer to his work, but they're going to be living in a fifth wheel trailer. So that's just, you know, it's just not really going to work. So when Wyatt went, he knew that, you know, something may change at some point. But when this was being decided, and I went and, and spoke with the director here just to kind of vent and get her support, um, it had not even occurred to me. But when I told her that Wyatt was going to be going to Washington, she said, he shouldn't go to Washington. He should stay here with you. And I kind of looked at her and I'm like, but then I would have to quit here. And she's like, no, you wouldn't need to. She said, you need to bring Wyatt here. He needs to live here with you so that we can all help and support you. Um, she told me, she said, if you bring Wyatt here, um, we'll be able to give him, you know, um, a lot of the same services that the other kids here get. Um, and the entire staff, you know that we will help you. Um, you won't be doing this alone. It's going to take a village to um, to raise this kid, and you need to bring him here, and we'll do that together. Um, I was shocked. Uh, didn't know what to say. She's not. She's the director of the shelter. She's not the executive director. Um, Ultimately, Sarah and I decided to let Wyatt go to Washington for a year because, um, you know, we kind of asked him, we said, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I want to go try something new. Um, so we did let him go, but he went knowing that there was a, a good possibility that um, he would be coming back to Cal here to California to live with Grandma. Um, but whether we would live here at the shelter or... I would go get an apartment or a house somewhere. We weren't quite sure. So when it was decided um, over the holidays 
that, you know, Wyatt was definitely coming back and definitely going to be living with me. I went back to the director here and she got the executive director involved. And basically what they told me is that they both supported me in bringing Wyatt here to live with me. Um, they did say that they would have to, you know, talk to the board about that. Um, those of you that watch my channel and, um, you know, kind of know what I got going on, probably know that how important this place is to me and how important the work that I do here is, how fortunate I feel to be able to do it. I mean, I get free rent, free utilities. I'm very grateful and very fortunate in that, but it's with me, it's way more than that too. Um, it's helping people. It's being able to give back. It's, um, being able to work in, uh, I, you know, for the last about 12 years, I've worked in the treat, uh, drug and alcohol treatment industry, but in many ways working here is, you know, very close to the same thing, if not extremely similar. So it's really important to me to do this. I mean, my daughter with Wyatt when he was younger and she still had custody of him, you know, there were points where they were homeless. Um, so, you know, I'm just, what I do here is super important to me. So the thought of leaving just really made me feel sad. But at the end of the day, Wyatt is the most important thing. Nothing's more important than that. Like I said, when I started this story is I'm not looking at this that I have to take my grandson. I'm looking at this that I get to take him. Um, you know, we're, we're just extremely, we're extremely, I'm extremely fortunate that I'm in a position where I'm able to do that and I do so with a lot of, of joy and willingness. Now it's going to be a tough transition. So I think Christine, the director here, I think she's right. I think it, it would be in our best interest to stay. So they have not like completely gone to the board yet. Um, so we don't completely have board approval. Um, I talked to him about it early in January and I hadn't heard anything back. And I did go to Christine last week and I said, you know, I kind of need to know what's going on. I need to have, um, the executive director talk to the board. And, uh, because if I'm going to have to start looking for an apartment, um, or a house, I need to start doing that. Um, you know, because that process doesn't always go extremely quickly. Um, and basically what she told me was she told me not to even worry about it. She said, um, she would talk to Carrie, but, um, that, you know, and when I, the, when this all happened, the executive director called me and she was very supportive and she told me, you know, at the time she goes, don't you worry, we'll make something work out. You know, it was a bit, my daughter and I had, did have to make the decision because this is a very, very small, um, st three quarter studio apartment. Um, you know, people. People do it here all the time with kids, though. Um, you know, we've got, our rooms are different sizes, but they live in rooms with, you know, sometimes four or five children, and they don't have a private bathroom and a private refrigerator and microwave and, you know, toaster oven. They don't even have those things in their room. I have a private entrance. I have... Um, a side yard, some outdoor space that's just dedicated just for me. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate people, people find ways to make this work. Um, and I think I can too. Um, but we had to decide and ultimately what it came down to was I feel really strongly that, um, the director here, she was correct in her, original assessment she's correct in what she's told me since January and that and that is that um at least for now I need to be here where I have a whole team of people 
to love Wyatt and not love him like staff. I mean, it'll it'll go even farther than that. He's going to have extended family here. Um, and, you know, some of the services that they're going to be able to to give him will be helpful. Things like homework club where he can get, um, you know, help with his homework and tutoring. And, um, you know, Christine is a therapist and um, is going to be, you know, willing to work with him. She lost her mother when she was very young. So she ha really has a heart for, um, you know, kids like Wyatt and actually the executive director did too. So, you know, they're, they'll be helpful. There's a counselor on staff here. Well, she's not on staff. She volunteers, but you know, she'll be working with Wyatt. Um, you know, and then there's the other RMs. Um, we're going to have Wyatt do some volunteering basically here at the shelter. He will help the other RMs out. Um, his chore, he, he asked me, he said, Grandma, if I do come back to live with you, what would my chore be? Because everybody has chores here, all the residents. And, you know, that's one of my jobs is to make sure that they follow the rules and do their chores. And I told him, I said, I don't know, we'll figure something out. But um, I think his chore will basically be to be the arms and legs for the resident managers when they're on shift and, you know, help them out by, you know, running and grabbing and, you know, just whatever he can to do to be helpful. Um, you know, I'll be getting him involved in boys and, and girls club, you know, just, just lots of different things. But like I said, there were so many decisions to be made. Is that what we wanted to do? Did I want to get a house or apartment? Did I want to move closer to my daughter? If I did that, it would, would have, uh, possibly meant that I would need to, you know, um, quit my job with the treatment center because the drive just would have been too, you know, difficult to do, um, and be able to spend any time with Wyatt. Um, you know, there were just all these things and we had to, to make those decisions. And I was kind of up in the air with it, but, um, and my daughter at first really did not support me staying here with him. She was, you know, she was worried that sharing a, a small room with, you know, your grandmother would not be good for a boy his age. But like I said, um, we have families here that make it work um, all the time. I don't know if I would do it forever. Um, I don't know if I plan on doing it forever. But for right now, to have him start to establish some extended relationships with the rest of the staff here and um you know like i said for me to just have that help and support if i get frustrated if i'm having a bad day i can just walk down the hallway and there are trained professionals that can um you know listen to me vent or give me a suggestion um you know all kinds of stuff so I've decided that I definitely want to stay. Um, there are just too many benefits for Wyatt. Um, I will continue to save kind of with the, the thought that, you know, I don't know um, that I'll be able to do this for four years here, but maybe. And it might be a situation where, um, you know, we stay here for... A year or two and then um, get a, an apartment here locally because I don't know that I would want him changing um, schools if he's doing well next year in school um, he'll be the, he has one more year of junior high then he'll be going to high school and I want him settled where he's gonna be by the time we you know are doing high school but we'll make that decision next year for now, we're, you know, the plan is that we're going to, st you know, stay here. Um, unless the board absolutely says no, but that's not going to happen. Um, 
as the executive director told me in January, the night she called me um, and was so supportive, she said, you know, there might be two board members that are a little bit hesitant, she said, but all I have to do is remind them how long it took us to find you. And it did. It took them about six months with no um, on-site uh, resident manager here um, before they were able to hire me. They went through a couple of bad ones, I think, too. But, um, yeah, for about six months, basically, they didn't have anybody. So she said, all I'll have to do is remind them how hard you were to find and how good you are at what you do. So that's kind of where I'm at with all of that. One of the things that Christine and, um, which is the director here, and the executive director are also trying to do is get a grant so that they would be able to hire me full time. And it would be full-time daytime in some of the, you know, areas that I have so much experience and, and knowledge in when it comes to, you know, providing this type of program and housing for people. So, you know, and, and you know, they, they're pretty confident that they'll be able to do that eventually. And if they could, I would probably take that position. It would probably pay a little bit less than what I'm making right now. But I wouldn't have to go anywhere for work. My work would be basically to walk down two hallways. Um, and I would be able to, you know, be flexible and be there for Wyatt if he's got something going on at school. Or, you know, I would be able to be here when he, he leaves and be here when he gets back and... So we'll see. We'll see. You know, Christine thinks that by, by maybe by the summer that may change. But we'll see. I mean, you know, I don't know what you believe in as far as like spiritually. Probably, you know, for me the important thing is is that I know that somebody's got a plan that's much bigger. Some, something that's much bigger than me has a plan. Um, not only for Wyatt's life, but for my life too. So I'm just going to stay positive and go with it and see where it ends up taking us. So that's pretty much where everything's at. He'll be coming in June. So um, that's, that's the big life change. So I'm going to pause here for a minute and start another clip. But I'll be right back because I got more stuff I want to talk about with you guys. Because just like they support me here at the shelter, you guys are a really huge support in my life too. And I need you right now. So I'll be right back. And I'm back. Okay. So that's basically in a nutshell what's going on. That's what's going to happen. Um, and that's the plan. So if you notice tonight that, uh, you know, my voice seems a little less energetic than normal. It's because, first of all, um, it's been a, it was a busy week, of course, and um, I worked, oh, about eight extra hours this week. Um, I mean, you know, besides my uh, normal, let's see, 40 plus 6, 7, I normally work probably about 48 hours a week, and I did an extra 8 this week, so I'm tired from that, but I think the other thing too that, you know, I probably should just go ahead and acknowledge, because it's important, and like I said before I quit, or before I started the new clip, um, you know, you guys are a support for me, and um, I want to be open and, and transparent, but if you he if my voice sounds just a little bit different than normal, it's partially because this is, like I said, I'm very, very grateful um, that I get to... Um, you know, take care of, of my grandson and that he's going to be living with me. Um, not only because I'm, 
I'm so glad to be doing that for him, but also, um, you know, regardless of the fact that Naomi no longer walks this earth, she's still my child. And as her mother, um, this is probably one of the most important things that I can do for her is take care of her son. But it is difficult. Um, and I think both myself and my daughter, um, Sarah, I think, you know, just to be completely honest, it's kind of making some of our grief issues just a little bit more painful right now. Um, and, and just kind of making us miss her more. Um, I know that that's the way I feel and I can tell from some of the things that Sarah has said that she's feeling that way too. Um, we're pretty open and honest with each other. So, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's a very hard thing. Um, but I'll get through it. Um, so you know, that's what the decision is, but there's a lot more that goes into it even than that. Um, have decided that I will stay here. Ironically, things are just kind of falling into place. Um, they are pretty certain, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will happen, that the, um, you know, I'm an auditor for a treatment center that's in a town that's about a 20 minute drive from here, but I actually have been, got transferred to the, their corporate offices um, almost two years ago. Two, it'll be two years in July. I got transferred to the corporate office to do my auditing, and um, it's, it's further, so it's about a, usually about a 40 to 50 to 40 minute to one hour drive depending on traffic but it, I, and it's California is crazy because I think it's only like 23 miles if there's absolutely no traffic like on a holiday or if I were to go like very off hours or whatever it's like a 20 minute drive but that's not the reality based on the time I go to work so um but Ironically, things are kind of just magically beginning to fall into place for me. And they told me um, last week, before I even had a chance to talk to them, that they were strongly considering transferring me back to the facility because they think that I'll be able to... Um, have more impact and just be able to um, work with the staff there. And, you know, it's it's different between, it's a difference between sending him an email or calling him and saying, hey, can you fix this for me? That's a little bit different than being able to just walk into their med room or their office and say, um, you know, we have this error or this issue that happened and we need to fix it. Let me show you how. Because um, that's one of the things that I did when I was at the facility. And I still do via email on the phone is, you know, a lot of um, sort of training on how to get this stuff corrected or how to do it right um, to begin with and things like that. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be much, that'll be a much easier process if I'm at the facility. So, and I had not even told them about any of this stuff with Wyatt. So that will make things a little bit easier. They haven't actually given me a date to transfer or said for sure where, you know, that I'm going to do that. But I, I really think it's going to happen. So that's really good. So another, you know, thing that I had to decide when I was deciding whether or not to stay here at the shelter or, um, you know, go try to find an apartment or a house somewhere and what city that was going to be in. Um, 
is just think about the realities that, um, I don't know how many square feet this room is, but it's, it's pretty small. Um, I call it my three quarter studio, as you know, because I do have, um, a full size refrigerator, a microwave, a coffee maker, a toaster oven, small one. Um, but I don't have a stove top. So, you know, in order to live here, well, first of all, um, I'll have to, you know, change my routine a little bit. Um, there is a main kitchen. There's two kitchens, actually. And I do have access to be able to use those. But by the time I get home from work um, late in the evening, you know, people are either feeding their children or trying to do their chore or whatever that is. And so it's, it's, you know, it's just too chaotic. So I do a lot of microwave frozen stuff, have learned to cook a lot of things in my toaster oven, and I'll probably still continue to do some of that, but I'll also, um, while the residents are in, um, their classes in the evening, Wyatt and I will probably take advantage of that and use the, the main house kitchen to, you know, make our meals, and um, I probably will use a, the crock pot a lot. So, you know, there's considerations like that, and then, you know, just having space. And I spend a lot of time with my daughter and my grandkids. I don't, like, see them every weekend or anything like that. Usually, probably two to three times a month, um, I'll go see them. The girls um, like to spend the night over here, so... We spend a lot of time together, um, and Sarah and the girls were here um, this weekend, and uh, my two granddaughters spent the night with me. Um, that's a, the other reason why I'm exhausted. Um, I sure love having them, but boy, it can wear you out. So, <clears throat> you know, I have a little, and when Wyatt was living down here, he spent a lot of time here with me anyway. So I have some experience in, in how to just kind of make it work. Um, in this real small room. And I have said over and over and over that I was going to, you know, give you guys a tour of the shelter um, and, you know, show you my, you know, maybe do a tour of my room. I think that would be kind of a fun video to do, but it just hasn't happened. So I'm still thinking about doing that. But when my daughter was over, because one of the things I'm going to have to do is right now I have a um, day bed. Um, so it works out really well because I've got it all kind of like um, pillows and stuff so that it feels like I have a couch. It's a good height to, to be comfortable. Um, and then, you know, I'm able to just move my pillows off and... and you know, have my bed ready to go when I'm ready to go to sleep. And because it's a day bed, I've got, um, I think, eight under the bed bins stacked under there. So that gives me a lot of storage. Um, I've got a decent sized closet, but it's not huge. There's a cupboard um, in my entryway. Um, so... But I mean, I'm gonna, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get rid of the day bed or put it in storage. I do have a storage unit. Um, God, that's expensive down here in California. $161. I think I could probably look around and find a better deal. And I think I'm probably going to do that sometime between now and June. But, um, you know, I've, I've got a storage unit with some of my things in there. So, you know, I'm, a I'm able to make it pretty well, um, but the thing about me is my style of, of decor um, that, I, that I love, um, I would probably call Victorian cluttered. Um, you know, I love the tchotchkes, the floral prints, um, Nice, dark, rich colors. Um, that's just kind of the way I've always liked to decorate. And my room has a little bit of that flair now. Um, but, and also, I'm a pack rat. I wouldn't really technically call me a hoarder. But I just, 
I have way too much stuff. I got rid of a lot of my stuff, most, most of what I owned, before I moved down here to California. Um, but, you know, I mean, I don't know how it happens. Diamond paintings aside, because we know I've got a lot of those. But I'm not quite sure how it happens that you just acquire things. So I've got way too much stuff. And so I've been aware that I was going to have to get the get a um, get rid of the day bed, um, get a I think what we've decided to do is get a loft bed with a futon underneath it. Um, and I'll sleep on the futon and of course why it'll sleep in the loft. Um, that I you know, but I was gonna need to do that and just basically, you know, pare down and make some room for him and just get rid of some clutter. Um, so I've, I've known I was going to need to do that, and I've, I've kind of started the process a little bit. But um, when my daughter was over here this weekend, she said something that made me realize that I'm going to have to go a little bit further with that than I was even planning. Um, Wyatt has, you know, I think three diagnoses. Um, which lots of people do, but he has been diagnosed with ADD, um, uh, depression, actually four, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress, um, which, you know, the depression and the post-traumatic stress, I mean, I think any little kid that had been, um, you know, through some, seen some of the stuff he unfortunately saw lived in some of the situations that he lived in, and then, you know, let alone to have it, you know, lose his mother when he was five, um, you know, there's definitely going to be some, some depression and some post-traumatic stress there. I mean, it's kind of like, why wouldn't there be? Um, so he does get, you know, treatment for all of those things. He works with, um, therapists and psychiatrists and counselors, and, He'll continue to work with the ones through his insurance, but he'll get that extra support here. But his what he struggles with the most is his anxiety. Um, and just certain situations will make him really nervous. And it's kind of, it's very, very difficult for him. Um, he, he does... Uh, take medication for it, but um, it's like an extreme case of anxiety. Um, it's very difficult to watch. Um, but anyway, that's one of the things that we have to teach him to cope with. But Sarah made an observation because I, you know, I like that kind of cluttered, cluttered feel. When I get real busy, um, you know, things in a small space like this can get pretty chaotic pretty quickly. Um, you have, you know, three or four things out of place and just all of a sudden it looks like a bomb went off. Um, so, you know, I kind of try as much as I can with my busy work schedule and everything else to just kind of stay on top of everything and just, you know, keep it as, as neat as I need to make me feel comfortable. But Sarah said this weekend, and when she said it, when we were talking about, you know, day beds and, you know, where I was planning on getting rid of things so you'd have somewhere for his clothes and just some different kinds of ideas for storage um, solutions. Because living in a small room like this, especially with the little, like, kitchenette thing I've got, it's, it's probably a whole lot like living in a tiny house. Um, thankfully... Wyatt has always loved being in small um, spaces. I think, you know, small environments just make him feel safe and cozy. He, he enjoys being here. Um, he's always liked staying here. So, you know, I think it's completely workable for us. But um, Sarah said something that made me realize I'm going to have to go even further than I had even really thought about. Um, she was saying how 
you know, I needed to think about the fact that it was going to be a little bit different with two people living here as opposed to just me living here alone in that Wyatt and I were probably going to, um, you know, need to have things sort of um, clean and uh, I don't want to say minimalistic, but very intentional and um, just, you know, uncluttered to, you know, to even more of an extreme than I had been thinking. And then she said to me, she said, you know, uh, and she knew that I was planning on paring down and I had been de decluttering anyway, but this, uh, this is more about the way I, my decor and stuff like that. Um, but she said to me, she said, you know, if things aren't kind of, um, very, um, Oh God, I can't think of the word she she was she kept using. If things don't look very intentional, um, it won't be good for you, and it definitely won't be good for Wyatt. And I kind of all of a sudden that hit me that she's right with his anxiety and with my anxiety too, um, and with two of us living here. Um, things are going to have to be not so Victorian, um, tchotchke and a little more, again, I don't want to say minimalistic, but a little more intentional. So, um, Sarah and I did a little bit of shopping this weekend, kind of picked up a couple of things to start that process. Um, <coughs> one of the things about me is, um, I am a putter downer. So what I have a tendency to do is I'll have, I'll be doing something. I'll have something in my hands and I just set it down and then I forget I even had it or I was going to put it away or it has a home or whatever. So getting rid of some of the clutter will help with that because it'll just be less to be cluttered. But, um, I, um, watch a YouTube channel called the clutter bug and I absolutely, her name is is Cass. I can't remember her last name. I'll try to link her channel in the description below, but she does um, personal organizing based on clutter bugs, and she's got these different um, categories. I think she has four of them, and you're a different insect based on your um, organizational style, and her theory is that people um, fail with organization because they're trying to organize in a way that doesn't fit their their organizing style and personality. So she the categories are um, a butterfly, a bee, a ladybug, and uh, is the other one a cricket? I don't remember. Anyway. Um, she has these tests and assessments, and what I've realized is that I am a, when it comes to my clutter and organizational style, I am a bee butt, okay? So, ironic, I'm working on a bee. So, I have the, probably the strongest tendencies when it comes to the the B um, style of organiz organization in that bees usually um, can organize. They they like to organize. I, I like to organize, but they like big, broad sort of categories um, rather than like having everything micro-organized. Just throw it in a bin, throw it in a box. But I have some B in me too that I want it to look really pretty. And, um, one of the strongest, um, butter, oh yeah, I have some butterfly tendencies. I'm not sure if I said B, um, butterflies have a tendency to want, they're really visual and they want to see everything all at once. And the part of, of my personality that's a little bit like that butterfly is the fact that if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So 
if I don't see it, I will forget about it. Um, and with some things that you need to organize, that can be a bit dangerous. So, and it's pretty extreme with me. So, I'm basically, when it comes to organizing, and like I said, it needs to be really, I like to have everything sort of, as Cass calls it, um, macro sorted, like everything for one project all in one place, but I want it to look pretty. So, um, you know what? Since I, I found out about CAST probably about a year ago, um, I just kind of go with that. That's one of the reasons why I'm, when I was um, watching a lot of her videos, that's why I bought this bee painting. I have a bee painting on my refrigerator right now. Um, and it's just to remind me that um, I'm capable of organizing. I don't have to do it the same way everybody else does. If I try to, like follow some sort of one-size-fits-all organizational rule type thing. It just, it doesn't work for me. So I am in the process of doing this. I've been doing it since, uh, since actually the beginning of December. I always get really like, I want to organize um, in December for some reason. But um, that's increased since January. And it's it just, you know, over the past few weeks, it's increasing anymore. And I have been decluttering, organizing, all of that stuff. But like I said, I realized this weekend that not only am I going to have to do that, but um, just to make this transition and just make life a little more pleasant for both Wyatt and I, I probably need to think about um, just streamlining even my decor. So I, you know, like I said, we did some shopping and I've kind of got that that process started but I've got a lot of work to do and it really kind of feels overwhelming um I was thinking because I think that organizing um can be a hobby and almost a craft in and of itself so I have watched you know like um this clutterbug channel um that I that I mentioned, <coughs> sorry, as well as a few other organizational type things on YouTube. And the thing is, is those videos are usually super professionally done and, you know, just beautiful and inspirational. And um, I've really enjoyed them and they've really helped. But I was thinking about maybe... Um, doing some videos kind of similar to that, just kind of some progress and process videos um, on my channel. Um, you know, being really open and honest, I'm not going to pull any punches. Um, I did kind of experiment with what that, doing a video like that might, what that might be like. So I did a video today, um, probably not the greatest video in the world, um, I probably should have found a different camera angle and, um, you know, it, but it just is what it is. Um, if I were going to, was going to do something like that, like I said, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not going to hide anything. And what I, when I'm organizing or doing something like that, what I like to do is set a timer for 20 minutes and just see how much I can accomplish in 20 minutes. It's amazing. <coughs> excuse me, very often you can do an entire project that you thought was going to take you all day in 20 minutes. Not always, but sometimes. Or you can make, you know, way more progress than you thought you would. Um, so I did do a video with a project that I was hoping was going to take me 20 minutes. It took about 40. So what I did is showed you where I started from, then um, paused, set a timer for 20 minutes, came back, showed you how much progress I made, and then finished up the last 20 minutes. I haven't filmed the, um, you know, the final result, but it really turned out amazing. I'm really happy with it. And the area that I did is the area that's just to my left right now. 
and it's the area where I've got a lot of storage for um, my diamond paintings and, and things like that. Some books and just, you know, it's my shelf storage unit. Um, I've, I, so I still need to finish that, um, you know, uh, this is the final result, um, video. I'll probably do that sometime this week, but I don't know if you guys would even be interested in watching that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and do a couple and just throw them up and just see how that goes. Um, you know, any support or encouragement you guys can, can offer me, um, during this season in my life, when I go through all these changes and all these transitions will be so appreciated. And I don't know, maybe you'll watch the video and you'll have some suggestions or something. Um, although I, I have to warn you, um, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes even, Oh, well, I mean, my daughter helps me all the time and stuff, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty opinionated when it comes to the way I want my home environment to be. The project that I did in this shelving unit, she wants me to get rid of the shelving unit. Um, I don't want to, and I don't plan on doing it. Um, I think what I accomplished today will work just fine for now. Um... And I think it fits right along in what she was talking about and what I want to do, which is kind of just, um, you know, make this a, a calmer, more tranquil, less visually stimulating environment. Doesn't mean it can't be pretty, but just like not so much visual chaos with, you know, just over decorated. Um, so that's um, something I was thinking about. I also, beginning on the 26th, every day for 40 days, um, I will be getting rid of um, three items a day, at least three. Some days I may do more, but at least three things are going to be gone. Um, and that probably sounds like, you know, I'm tell like I'm telling you, I have way too much stuff, and that probably sounds like, it might be pretty easy, but um, I it actually probably will not be, especially after I've done it for a week or two, because, um, you know, you just start getting down to that place where you don't have much left that you're willing to part with. But this is something I need to do. So I was thinking about doing that as sort of a video vlog. And... Just like, you know, popping on for a couple of minutes and talking about what I'm, what I'm um, decluttering and um, just doing that. Because like I said, in my opinion, <clears throat> decluttering, creating home environments, it's, it's a um, hobby and a craft too. And since I've got to do this, I might as well find some way to make it fun for myself because I need the motivation, you guys. I mean... I don't want to procrastinate. I want to get this done as quickly as I can. I want to have everything pretty much done and ready to go before I go on the cruise that I'm going to be going on in May so that, you know, um, I don't have to worry about that. It, the cruise that I'm going on is um, towards the end of May, and then, you know, by the time I get back, it'll just be, like, right around the corner when, um, why it will be, be arriving. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought maybe I would take you guys on this journey with me, um, and just see what I'm capable of accomplishing. Um, so, and I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to try the video vlog this week, and I think I'm going to do one or two of those, like, project videos um and we'll see maybe people will watch them maybe they won't but like I said I could really really appreciate and um use the the support and I think it you know your guys' support might help keep me motivated and I don't have a choice but to be motivated at this point so that's kind of what I'm thinking 
So I got a lot done on this painting tonight. Um, I wanted to do three videos this week. I was hoping that I would have um, three, you know, up and finished by Sunday. Tonight is Sunday night. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, I did do two videos. One was a progress um, update on the diamond painting path that or no not the diamond painting path actually project was a purchase oh, i can't talk i must be getting tired project with a purpose number three which is the um diamond art club <clears throat> shepherd's cottage that the residents and i are working on that will be auctioned off to raise money for the shelter in may um, so I did that video. I also did um, a framing video because that's the other thing is I'm trying to frame things because, again, I just need to get things finished and completed and out of my energy field so I'm not worrying about or, you know, feeling like I'm, I've constantly got undone things because that's the other thing, you guys. Between now and June, I've got to focus on really getting myself in the best place I can be emotionally, um, spiritually, and financially. Um, you know, because raising a teenager, that's that's going to be expensive. Um, I will get some help from Sarah um, and her husband, and um, he does get adoption support. So, um, you know, financially, I'm sure I'll make it just fine. I'm not too worried about any of that. But it will be expensive, let's face it. Um, so yeah, I just got to be in the best place, you know, that I could possibly be in the meantime. So um, it's really important that I just get things completed and out of my, out of my um, energy field and my awareness and all that kind of, kind of stuff. So I did frame three three um, projects this week, so I feel really good about that. I hope this week to do, um, obviously, as, like I was talking about, I hope to um, finish the project video um, that I did half of today. I hope to do a random lucky dip draw for my next diamond painting because I'm almost done with this one you guys um, and hopefully I'll get some things framed um, and be able to um, do a video with that too so that would be three videos and I'm gonna work on a video vlog with my decluttering redecorating change my life be happy journey um so yeah hopefully i'll have some good stuff coming up this week and um we'll just kind of go from there but in the meantime thank you for watching this video thank you for your support like i've said several times tonight um you guys probably do not even have any concept um how much support you actually are in my life and um how much how much Having my channel and having all of you watch my videos and support me and leave comments and, you know, all the wonderful things that you've done for me and the residents here at the shelter, it just motivates me so much. And probably more so than maybe any time in my life, um, you know, in the... Past, I don't know how many years um, motivation is more important than ever right now so I just am so grateful to um, have you all in my life <coughs> excuse me my throat's just really wanting me to stop I think so that's gonna be it for tonight you guys I got a lot of progress done this is I'm probably at about the halfway point of this little strip so probably a few more hours sometime this week and I will have this painting completed and hopefully I'll get it framed. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you join us. Um, 
we would love to have you join us over on the, the Diamond Painting Path Project where I post some additional photos, info, fun stuff about the Diamond Painting with Karen project that I am working on here at the shelter with the residents on a continuous basis. Love to have you join us over there. And just remember, you guys, we can change lives one drill at a time, even if it's just our own, because when our lives get better, the entire world is likely to change. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys really soon.